Short Fuse Talking Comics, and I'm your host for this week, uh, Kat Kalmia. And uh, of course, we we are going to talk some good comic stuff here, and uh, waiting for people to join, and I got a share, of course, while we talk. Uh, you might know me uh, from all the other uh, live shows that did during my Kickstarter, but you don't want to introduce myself before, uh, you know, sharing the video. But uh, my name is Jack Alamia, like I said. I, I do two books for Short Fuse Media, like Father, Like Daughter, and they call her The Dancer. So uh, short synopsis of Like Father, Like Daughter, and they call her Dancer. Uh, like Father, Like Daughter is about a high school student uh, named Casey Ryder. Father left her, became a full-time superhero. Everyone in the world loves him except for her, and then she inherits his abilities. So you got to find out what happens next. Uh, that is my elevator pitch for the series. If you haven't checked it out, definitely go check it out. I will give you a link for our Short Fuse uh, store. Uh, if you haven't bought any of our titles, this is a great place to, to start. And uh, like Folly Daughter is under the Heroes Ignited line. So uh, we have issues one through four available over there. So I'm going to get you a link for our store that we did. Grab that. There you go. And uh, part of the Red Band line is my other book, uh, which has one issue out right now, but will be a mini series, a four issue uh, mini series, uh, which is called They Call Her Dancer by a young woman uh, who is a dancer slash assassin. And when she was younger, she witnessed her parents being murdered in front of her and never dealt with that trauma until now. Um, hopefully, you don't hear uh, like sizzling in microwaves because I am in my kitchen. Um, so that is the premise of all that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. I'm gonna start sharing a thing here. Again, as I always say, I, I wish you could share these uh, these videos beforehand. Go on the short views page, but yeah, we have a we have a big show planned uh, for tonight. Uh, like I said, I'm going to talk about promoting your indie comics. So that means going to discuss Kickstarters, promoting your Kickstarter. Which uh, before the show gets into heavy detail, I'm going to promote a couple of Kickstarters are out because uh, you know that's also important. Uh, Michael's got me, so hopefully uh, we got some more shares going on. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm gonna you know share some Kickstarters as well, like I said, because that's that's kind of that's, that's part of this, you know. Uh, being part of a community is very important. I'll get into that. So uh, yeah, big things that I'll go through, and again, more in um, uh, I have something in my tooth, and I really, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm seeing I have something in my tooth, so uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Something in my tooth. I wish I had like a. Hey everyone, I am Dan O'Callaghan. I'm the writer and artist of The Third Hand. This is my second comic book series and my second Kickstarter. And I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. It's going to be a very similar format to my last Kickstarter from last year. So it's a 112 page book, uh, trade paperback, and it collects the four issues of The Third Hand, which is a time travel series about a band of time travellers who, they're sort of like mutants. They don't need a car or a uh, police box. They just innately are time travellers. It's in their DNA and they find other time travellers throughout history and throughout the world and they have different ideas about what their powers should be used for. And this is where the conflict starts. There's a deeper synopsis below, as well as a couple of portraits of the time travellers and a bit of background behind who each of them are. I'm super excited about these rewards. Uh, we've got 
uh, digital rewards, which you, you know, for those of you who are overseas, you don't want to pay for shipping and all that, I understand. So I've got some really cheap options for uh, getting just the first issue in the series or the whole series digitally. Uh, there is the physical book though, that's the main reward and uh, that will be shipped all over the world. And for those of you who missed out on last year's uh, Kickstarter that I ran, Descendant of the Nephilim, my first comic book series, I'm going to do a double pack of the third hand uh, book and Descendant of the Nephilim book. Other rewards include a three art print set. You can also get a commissioned artwork. And the final reward is everything, the whole lot. The art prints, a commissioned art piece, and the two uh, comic book series. These rewards will be extremely limited, those. I hope I've given you enough details about this series and the Kickstarter. If you've got any more questions, though, please uh, hit us up in the comments. I love you guys for checking this out. I really appreciate it. And I hope you are eager to back this Kickstarter. I love Kickstarter and I love you guys. <laughs>
Another uh, Pixar I want to promote is Scorpio, which just was released today. And this is by uh, John, who I used to work with uh, for the Marvel Report. And, I, you know, another guy who's just been honestly killing it. Oh, we got Andrew watching. Uh, we got Dakota watching. Thank you for watching. Uh, Andrew, what's up, cat? Nothing much. Um, yeah, so Scorpio, John I worked with uh, with the Marvel Report, and I feel like he's been really killing uh, the indie game and, and doing everything right, and that's why I really wanted to give a spotlight here. Uh, he's promoted his book way before it launched, which is important. I think a lot of people that do Kickstarters, they're just like, I'm gonna win it, uh, and not contact anybody um, throughout this process. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, really important that uh, that he did that and also his artwork his presentation throughout the whole entire Kickstarter is really great so uh, yeah go check out that it's, it's really good and if you like supernatural stories go check that one out all right uh, Spooky Girls is next up this is our last picture oh and I deleted it for a second so give me a second uh, Spooky Girls is our last picture I'm going to be promoting uh, there's scroll down. Oh, we got a lot of comments. Uh, Andrew said John did a very good job with this campaign. Yeah, I actually haven't even checked what his, uh, his backers are right now again. First. Since 2005, Sporkman has battled the forces of evil and stood up for what is just and for what is right. In his last adventure, Sporkman Conventions, he even fought the evil Lord Fader and battled William Schaffner with hilarious results. So now he is ready for an all new adventure. This time he's going to Japan. Sporkman goes to Japan is the newest comic to hit Indiegogo. This brand new story is both fun and funny. It's full of action and almost anything can happen with ninjas, babes, robots, and even a giant crab. The sky is the limit. Spork Man is joined by an all new Spork team not seen in the original story. Noki, Foofy, Lulu and my personal favorite, Screech, have joined the team to help Sporkman fight the forces of evil. So there are lots of new and fun characters in this comic. Sporkman Goes to Japan is also wholesome and a humorous story that is okay for all ages. Where the good guys and the bad guys are clearly defined and Sporkman and the team must contend with the evil Shogun Z to save all of Japan. So there are several choices and price perks you can choose from. This great indie comic has perks ranging from $1 to $125. I suggest the $12 perk as you receive physical copies of all the new Sporkman Goes to Japan comics, including Volume 1 and Volume 2, as well as Sporkman Conventions and a Sporkman Emblem decal. So the creative team on this book is writers Eric Berry and Chuck Bonetti. The artist is Gifni Ricciati and Rodrigo Evanez from the hit comic Red Ninja Momita is the colorist. And we also have Charles Bonetti on the letters and Chris Sylvia is the creative consultant and editor with a brand new cover by Eliza Ariel Forrest. So be sure to check out Sporkman Goes to Japan, available only on Indiegogo. First day, 78 backers, $3,000. Man, he's the man. Congratulations, John. That's awesome. Um, and again, he did so much to promote before uh, he launched that Kickstarter. He did the mailing list. He did everything he needed to do uh, to promote that Kickstarter. And look, look how it, you know, look how it uh, transcended. I don't know if that's the word. Um, so look at that. Uh, he did a really good job. 
And also he supports, he supports other uh, Kickstarters. He supports my Kickstarter. I know he supports the, the indie community, he talks to the indie community, and, and has made a face for himself. That's important. Uh, another person who supports the indie community, again, makes a uh, face for himself in the indie community and, and shows the importance of this community uh, and, and being able to do stories that he wants to do, and that is Pat Shand. Uh, been a good friend of mine for a long time. Uh, and. You know, love his Destiny New York stuff. Really excited to get uh, Games for Asperista, which he teamed up with uh, for like Father Like Daughter. Uh, and now he has a, a fun, uh, like kind of Lumberjanes type tale. I think he also mentioned Carrie uh, was an influence. Uh, spooky girls, uh, just these these monster girls uh, living their lives, and it, it's really cute. Um, and it's really great to see uh, how many successful Kickstarters he's had, and you should definitely go support. He, he has a lot of quality stuff, and again, in the game to show comics that are not maybe seen in the mainstream, and I think that's so important. So that's why I wanted to, to plug those three. Uh, we actually have a lot of comments here. Uh, please keep trickling in. I do need to get a, a water. I should have gotten that before, so I'll be back in a second. So hold on. Thomas LLC. Hi, we are Sierra Nova Comics, and it's been a little over a year since we filed our papers to become Sierra Nova Comics LLC. In a year's time, we've developed many new ideas and made amazing connections with indie creators throughout the world. We have written and are about to release our graphic novel's first full-length comic. Aside from growing our own following, we've also found a way to help our fellow indie creators. We've created something pretty incredible, which is called the Indie Revolution. It's spreading like wildfire. Through the Indie Revolution, we've created a unique store on our website, which now displays custom t-shirts with more merchandise coming soon. These designs include those by yours truly, as well as the work of creators within our community. Another huge endeavor, the city map. It's one of the primary goals for this Kickstarter. We have in development an interactive city map, which will play out much like a video game. Not only will we be able to explore, we'll also be able to interact with landmarks such as the movie theater, which will be host to unique indie films. Additionally, music videos will be played between films during intermissions. You will also have properties to rent, a radio station with indie artists, and much, much more. We are looking to fund the creation of 10 new comics at the start of our graphic novel. Each month, we are looking to release an episode of the Sierra Chronicles to remember the site to kick off our comic book. We are also looking to begin sharing our work by attending comic conventions throughout the U.S. This can be costly for most independent creators, so our goal is to be their representation. We're hoping to get a booth where we can share our work as well as the work of creators who partner with us on this journey. As we said, we're also looking to promote indie films. Not only are we promoting these films, but we're going to be creating our own. To start, we'll need a decent camera and a laptop to handle video editing as well as animation. By donating to our Kickstarter, you can receive rewards such as personal thank you cards, social media shout outs, one of two unique prints from either of our partners, New Leaf Comics or Creepy Trees Inc., a shirt of your choosing from our indie store, or even become a part of our universe. Also, during this campaign, we'll be running our Halloween giveaway. We have partnered with a bunch of indie creators for some amazing prizes. Through shares, likes, or donations, you will receive entries into the giveaway. By the way, these are in addition to the rewards from Kickstarter. So, how can you help? Simply spread the word. Make the indie revolution thrive. Any donations are a huge help, but sharing with friends and family would be amazing. So, join the- Alright guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, should've prepared with- I actually got a soda, but, um, should've prepared with that beforehand, but I am back. So we do have some comments here. Um, let's see. Uh, we got Andrew. Oh, we got a lot of people joining. Uh, John just talked about you a lot. So, uh, definitely go scroll back. I just gave you a big, uh, some big kudos. So Andrew says, I love the spooky girls writer. I love that he has written for big titles that I'm interested in reading. Um, and then I think Andrew continued by saying, Pat wrote a uh, run on Tron. Yes, he did. Uh, Juan says, do you recommend a Kickstarter for a person that is just starting, or should that person wait to have a fan base to do a Kickstarter? Um, let me read that again. Do you rec recommend a Kickstarter for a person that is just starting, or just 
Yeah, okay. So you definitely need to build your fan base before you do a Kickstarter. I think that's the, the biggest issues that people um, have with with their Kickstarters is that a lot of times they just say, I'll get my audience, no worries, while I do the Kickstarter. It doesn't work that way. You really need to build an audience and a brand beforehand. And that kind of gets me into the, the bigger subject. So definitely uh, collect your questions. Oh, and I also have Andy Cordy who says hi. Um, so please collect your questions as uh, I go through this. I'm gonna kind of run down promoting your books and then I'll go to those questions. That was a really good one to kind of start this conversation, which is, um, uh, is that you need to build a brand for yourself uh, before getting into this comic game. Uh, at least on Twitter or Facebook, uh, doing, even if you just say, hey, I like comics, I think people should know through your, through your social media that you at least like comics, right? You talk to people that are in comics, especially indie comics. Like I was saying, something that John did very well uh, with his Kickstarter and, and someone who just launched his first Kickstarter, 78 people in one day, first Kickstarter, um, he interacted with other indie creators, he asked questions, he wasn't afraid to ask questions, and that's a big thing. Uh, don't be afraid, just because you're a beginner, ask other people that are part of this community um, things and, and build a build a community uh, of people and support those people, because that, again, they will support you back if you do support them, and I think that's another thing people misconstrue or construe is that, oh, I'm just going to make a comic and and not buy anyone else's comics, or even learn about comics. I've had some people who just... My name is Mark Roberts, 79431. I was a murderer, but I've become, I can't explain, but when it's activated, I feel stand good. want to write comics and have never read a comic in their life, but they see it's popular. They're like, I'm going to write a comic book uh, because I want to be a writer. Um, but you need to know the form. You need to know what this medium is about before you before you make a comic. Uh, we got Dan who joined. Juan who says, awesome, thanks. Um, so I'm going to go into, I want to really touch on conventions, but I think that's like a whole nother piece. So I'm going to try doing Kickstarters and, and if I have time, I'll try touching upon conventions. But um, yeah, so for, for Kickstarters, I, I said what you should do to begin. So how about you made your fan base already? You know, you, you have your people, what do you do? Uh, well, when you launch, you know, that's obviously going to be your biggest day. Uh, that is definitely going to be your biggest day for, for a Kickstarter. Uh, but you got to continue that momentum. What I did, even in the middle of your campaign, is going to be your slowest. Uh, you know, what I did is I was on Facebook all the time. I was making Facebook Lives. I was... Um, really pushing it. And another thing as the PR person of this company, what I've been doing for every single short fuse campaign is making contacts with press people. Now, if you guys don't know, I didn't mention this in the beginning of my uh, video, I'm also a journalist. I started uh, this thing, this comic thing, uh, with a YouTube channel called Comic Uno, which I still have. I still review books uh, on a weekly basis and still review the Marvels, DCs, and indie stuff. So, what, um, you know, I started with that, you know, I started being a reviewer and then I, you know, I've, I've worked with IBN. Uh, I was part of their comic uh, column over there when they when they did the column reviews for, for comics. I uh, work for Newsrama. I've been working for them for about two years now. Uh, I do interviews with, you know, TV shows, comic stuff. So I, I know about comic journalism and what you have to do, even if you're not a journalist yourself, is connect with people journalists connect with people um even if you just comment on their work you know not having an alternative alternative motive like they must you know 
read my comic, even if you just like find a, a reviewer or critic that you really like, and then along the way you kind of become friends with them and say, hey, you know, I launched this Kickstarter, can you promote my book? And then once you know these people, that that person is going to want to help you. Like my good, good friends, um, I try to promote as much as possible. And, and people that try to connect with me and show support to me, um, I go the extra mile to help them. Uh, but I also try to help them just in general because I am part of this community. I know it's hard. So what I do is the Indie Comics Spotlight, which, uh, you know, a lot of people contact me to do reviews because I'm part of this community. And I try to give a spotlight uh, because I know how hard it is. I do that on Frontline. Oh, it's got surgeon messages somewhere. Oh, um, got Arrow. <laughs> I'll close that for now. Um, Andy, I will answer you when I'm done with this if you're watching. Um, not watching Arrow yet, but I am behind on all my superhero shows at, at the moment for this season, even though they just started. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, so I did that. So connecting with press people is really important. Knowing uh, which websites post about Kickstarters and indie stuff. You have to do that research probably before you launch your Kickstarter. Uh, and keep continuing to do that research. Keep continuing to make those uh relationships with people through Twitter or Facebook. Twitter, I would say, is very good with press uh, because you do have a lot of comic book press over there. So that's my uh, suggestion about PR and, and press for Kickstarters. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else Kickstarter-wise I want to talk about. Like I said, just keeping your face there, just keep posting and Sharing groups has been really important. Uh, finding the indie groups that interact and just in general indie comic groups. Uh, and then commenting in those indie comic groups to show that you are a participant, a participant in this uh, community is really important. Uh, so find groups that uh, fit your comments. So let's say you're doing a female-led book, you know? Female-led comic group, go in that group uh if you're doing a fantasy thing you know sharing in the, the fantasy blogs you know uh so try finding uh communities that would like your, your particular book so that's kind of recommendations on kickstarter um kind of talked about twitter you know like i said just connecting with other comic writers artists and uh press people are really important there and, and just talking about their work and not just your work, kind of combining the both is really important on both social media platforms. Uh, and then, I guess I'll talk about conventions, because I do have, okay. um, I guess I'll talk about conventions, because uh, I wanted to talk about that throughout this, and then we'll go to your questions. So please ask questions, um, that way I can get to those uh, as we get to towards the end of our show. So, uh, conventions, I do a lot of them. If you don't know, if you don't follow me on social media, don't follow short views on social media. I, I do a lot of conventions and I feel like that's one of the most important things of getting your book out there. And I found definitely a bigger fan base after I've done conventions and, and people I've met at conventions saying, hey, where's the next issue? And, and, and becoming, um, having communications with them post convention. Uh, and then I would say even getting loyalty for your company after conventions, because they see you physically and they remember you. Um, so when you're at a convention, one thing I see a lot uh, is people getting intimidated. You know, they just kind of sit there with their hands folded and don't say anything, um, you know, in the writer's part, point of view. What you got to do is talk to people. Uh, you got to say hi to people. You, you know, someone passes by, hey, in my thing, what I do, I say, hey, do you like comics? Because it's an interesting question, right? You're at a comic convention. Most people come and, and they say, hey, why would I be here if I don't? I mean, we have a conversation about comics or whatever. Sometimes they come to me and say, I really don't. I'm here for this person. I'm here for that person. I'm here for the signings. I'm here for that. But it starts a conversation. And it's obviously a conversation everyone in that building is going to have an answer for. So it's an easy question to ask while people are passing by. So that's how... get someone to your table and uh, and I say, hey, would you like to hear about the comic I wrote? So there, a lot of times people are like, oh, you wrote this book? That's cool. Let me hear about it. So you give them the pitch and uh, you give your whole spiel and you know, say, hey, you want to check out some pages? That way they can actually see physically what this is uh, about. Uh, and that's kind of how you do conventions. Obviously, every person's different, but I feel like that's, that's something that's 
that's done well for me. Um, kicking conventions are obviously hard to you, but don't straight out go for the $300 cable conventions. Uh, you never know what the audience is going to be, and, and that's a lot of money. You have to think about how much money you're putting into this, how much money that's going to cost to, to put the books. Hey, if you could go to a free convention, that's obviously the best, but a lot of times you have to do conventions before you're invited as a guest or whatever. So uh, look for the cheaper stuff. Look for stuff that's around your area. Area. There's so many comic conventions popping up because of the popularity of comics. So look for stuff that is maybe under $100 uh, to really get your feet wet, even if it's not the Baltimore Comic Cons or New York Comic Cons. It's something. And so many people want to do New York Comic Con, too. Now, I'm somebody who I love going. I've been going since 2008. I don't know if I would ever get a table there. A, it's really expensive. And uh, B, you know, a lot of people aren't actually there for comics, you know, and they, they kind of squeeze you in a, a smaller artist alley than ever before. And for me, it's better to do press. That's, that's you know, I get to work for that. And, and for me, that's the most I could get for that convention. I love doing the convention, but it's more about TV than anything for me over there. Uh, same for San Diego. San Diego hardly has an artist alley, so I don't think it's worth paying the money. Some people do really well there, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Baltimore Comic Con I had a lot of success in. I really enjoyed that. And there's going to be a couple other Comic Cons I, I try out this year, uh, some Wizard World conventions. Uh, I want to try Fan Expo Boston, maybe. Hey, if you guys have any recommendations for future conventions, please let me know. All right, so uh, that's kind of my spiel of promoting your indie books. I'm going to go through some questions now. I see that we have at least, yeah, we definitely got enough people commenting. So please continue to comment as you go along. So we got Andrew, who says, and I didn't share this on Twitter. Sorry, I'll have to share, share this on Twitter later. But um, hopefully my um, short fuse family here is sharing as well. Because, uh, again, it is hard uh, to share when, when you're alive. So... So far, it seems like a lot of people are watching, and we got some good, good feedback right now. So Andrew, uh, he asks, uh, who is also a big uh, short fuse fan, um, how hard is it to make your own Kickstarters? I understand you just finished a successful trade Kickstarter. What is the worst of uh, the creation, the Kickstarter, and the mailing of the rewards? See, actually, this is not a question for me, uh, because I did not create the page. Uh, I give all that to Sean and his team. He created the page and the mailing of the of the rewards. I also do not do. Um, Sean usually mails me the stuff I have to sign and then I mail it back to him. So that is definitely more a question for Sean when he does one of these shows, which I believe he did do last week, and I'm sure he'll do another one soon. Oh, or when he does one of his own shows on on his. Uh, uh, I want to say channel because of YouTube, but on his Facebook page. Sean says, sup? Uh, Andrew says, I need to contact you to arrange an interview for my podcast with Michael. Uh, we'll talk to Michael, see if he'd like to do the podcast, and if he does, uh, we'll, we'll set that up for you. Uh, so if you want to put me in a, like, a group chat or whatever, you definitely can with Michael. Uh, let's see. And a scroll down. John says I just like talking about comics with folks, and it's true. I, you know, I it's it's just fun. It's fun to talk comics, stuff that you love. Uh, and in the long run, though, John, it, it definitely helps you uh, too. Even if you don't notice your brand building, you, you still are. Uh, Andrew says I love the indie comic spotlights you do. Well, thank you. I I try to, you know, again, just helping you try to spread the word. John says, in my experience, talking organically is the way to go. Oh, I agree. 100% agree. If you love what you do, that's, that's, it's going to bleed through. I think the same thing goes to when I do conventions and why I sell so well is that I love this. I love what I make. I love the four views. I love um, comics. And that bleeds through when I'm selling the book. If I was just somebody there because I wanted to make money or, you know, uh, just trying to do a business because it's, popular, you know, you know, <laughs> comics uh, is a hard business to, to sell in. Uh, I think people would see through that, you know, people see your passion in that, and that's important. 
Michael says, Daredevil is back. I know, I haven't even gone to watch that either. Oh, Jay and Chris join. Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, join in. I will also like to plug um, Last Ember Press. Uh, Chris and Jay are both part of that. Last Ember Press is uh, ran by my two very good friends, Lisa Moore and Brant Fowler. Um, he does. They both do some really great stuff there, some good comics. They do want good quality indie books. Uh, definitely go check those out. Uh, it's good. Um, they don't have a current Kickstarter though, so I can't promote that. But uh, Last Ember was my favorite from from their lineup, and then Chris he ends up doing uh, Celestial Falcon. Go check that out if you like theme books, uh, especially like books like like Father Like Daughter and stuff like that. You could, or even if you like shows like Smallville, um, I think you'll enjoy Celestial Falcon. Uh, go check out all that stuff. So wanted to plug another company there. Terry uh, Kayser says, I sent you an email over a week ago with no response. Um, which email? Was it the, if you are the same, let me see if you're the same person. Let me see. I'm gonna see Terry, or maybe I didn't get the email. Unless you're talking about short views, then I don't run that email. <laughs> um, uh, Sean, who runs the email? Let me see if you contacted me. I'm gonna look. I know I contacted somebody about uh, Baltimore Comic Con recently. I want to see if that was you or not. Let's see. And I did respond back to you. If you're the same person. I don't know if you are. <laughs> um, I will look. I'm looking through my emails now. Let's see. I also email a lot of people. <laughs> so I am looking. All right, here we go. No, that's somebody else. Uh, Terry, I don't know if you didn't email me, uh, but I didn't get it. Uh, if you emailed short fuse. That's not me. So uh, you'll have to talk to Sean. Sean Mack is the guy who runs the short news page. So please uh, comment back. Uh, if it's an email you could deal, you know, I can help you with here, let me know. Uh, if you feel like that's something more Sean to deal with, maybe you can message him. Uh, we'd love to help you out, uh, whichever email it's about. So, anyways, or, or again, if it's a question you can ask here, uh, you got me for, uh, you know, you got me for a little while. So. All right, Dan says, hopefully New York Comic Con will be done with construction by next year and expand Artist Alley back to normal size. I hope so. I loved Artist Alley when it was the normal size. I know it was the construction of Jab Center. But still, it sucks as in such a cramped area and you don't have as many indie people doing New York Comic Con anymore because of it. And if they are, they're like on the show floor and they have to pay more money and they're obviously trying to fight against, you know, media stuff more than actually people trying to get comics. Uh, I saw a lot of indie people on the floor this year, uh, like the actual floor, not Artist Alley, and I just um, don't think that's money well spent right now. Um, but hopefully, like you said, Dan, when they go back to the, doing that area in the Java Center, uh, you know, we'll get back to the Artist Alley uh, it was. And Pat joined. Hey, Pat. Talking to you about you before, too, and I plugged in your uh, Kickstarter. All right, let's see. Reggie says, uh, in the case of web comics, where does that go? I don't really get the question, but I'll try answering it as much as I can about web comics. Uh, you mean promoting your web comic? Uh, well, promoting, I think, is very similar. You know, just getting to know the indie community or the web comic community is really important. And if you're looking for a place for web comics, I know Tapas is a place, T A P A S. Uh, and webtoons, I found a lot of success in a lot of success, uh, successful stories. Uh, one book I really like a lot is Witch Creek Road, an uh, indie book, probably one of my favorite um, indie indie books, uh, is that title. And I know they just got a really successful partnership with webtoons and they're posting their book there. Uh, and they pay the people that, uh, if you're a featured artist, they end up paying you if you do well enough on webtoons. So I think that's a good place to be at. Uh, or, you know, obviously you can make your own website that was old school webtoons or webcomic type thing and make your own website and try and promote them that way. Uh, so that's my suggestions for webcomics. But again, it goes to a similar space. It's just like, if you want people to know about your webcomic, you have to support other people that have webcomics. You have to talk to other people. Uh, because it's sad to say no one's gonna, well, I don't wanna say no one will support you if you don't support them, because that's not true. But I think getting, started you have to build relationships so people know you know 
part of you, that you're part of this community and that's so important in the indie world and comics in general it's such a small niche audience we all know each other and, and you should be part of that you should be part of the conversation all right let's see uh, John says compile those into trades and kickstart it. Yeah, also with the web comics, I definitely seen some some success with that. Uh, even um, other bigger writers like uh, or artists, Mike Norton, who did I believe he did Revival. Uh, he did the little Trump books, and I, they started as a web comic, and and then he compiled them, and I believe they're being published by Image now. Uh, so you never know where they're gonna go. Obviously, that's kind of a different story. Uh, I hope you're not hearing ice in the background. You might be, but you are. I'm sorry, in the kitchen. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, obviously he's a bit more, you know, he is more of an established creator, but that's something you definitely could do is be compile your webcomic and uh, make it into a trade or, or pitch it to somebody. You know, webcomics is, a, is the way to go a lot of times. And a lot of writers and artists also say that, who have been established, say that, uh, that's the way to start. Because a lot of people, there was this conversation about um, unsolicited ideas, and then we're like, well, how do we tell your our ideas to you about Marvel at DC? How do we pitch to Marvel at DC? Um, you will only pitch to Marvel at DC if you're established, but how are you gonna be established is right here, this indie realm. You, you establish yourself by building a brand within your own stories, and that's how you can build yourself to maybe one day work for Marvel or DC, or hey, just continue to do your own stuff and, and be satisfied with that, and even make a career out of that. Let's see, uh, definitely come up with your, oh, we got LaShawn in the con, uh, watching, we got Jeremy. Uh, compile your last minute questions here, because uh, I guess we're starting to get to the end, it's about the half an hour point, uh, so I want to get as many questions as possible. So once I run out of questions is when I'm going to end the show, so if you have any last minute questions, add them now. And I think I've got like two more, or one more, uh, right now. Paige says, hey, hey Paige. Uh, Tony Lee says, hey, how are you, are you? Hey, are you? Um, how am I? Uh, doing pretty well doing the show. So, uh, Jay has his question here. Um, he says, "Hey, Cat, what con would you love to be able to like to set up at and sell books?" Um, I mean, I would love to be established enough to say, "Hey, I could be a guest at your Comic Con. That'd be really cool." Um, I've been to so many conventions, it's so hard. Um, I've done a lot of the conventions I've wanted to do. Uh, Baltimore has been on the list for a really long time and I was really happy I was able to do that um, this time around. Uh, I've heard good stuff about like C2E2 uh, in the past, but again, I don't know if that's more media side or like Artist Alley. I haven't heard anything about Artist Alley there, uh, but like media wise, I've heard about that convention a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I've done a lot, so that's a hard question. That is a hard question. But I guess, like I said, the New York Comic Con answer, if I was like so established, I'd be invited as guests. Or honestly, that's the goal in general, just to be invited as a guest to a lot of these cons. You know, that's that's a big goal. Um, all right, so I guess that's the end of our show because uh, we did run out of questions. And I want to thank everyone who joined me. And then obviously join us for another edition of Talking Comics with Short Views. Uh, next week, next Monday, uh, and hear a new topic. And I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments what uh, type of shows you would like me to do uh, in the future, what type of topics you'd like me to cover. Uh, this is obviously like the big scope topic uh, because it's kind of like what I do for comics is the PR work and promoting. So I thought this would be like a good general topic to discuss. And, and so far it was because I filled a whole 30 minutes of it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the material and go check out those Kickstarters I plugged. And thank you guys. I appreciate it. Bye.